the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Hi, guy. Koinonia, I want you to know that every time you come before the presence of God, something is happening to you. Hallelujah. It is possible to be in the presence of God and not know and not be changed. But when you come before His presence and your heart is opened, you will be changed. Haggai 2 verse 9. The glory of the latter house shall be greater than the former, saith the Lord of hosts. And in this place I will give peace, saith the Lord. Jump to verse 20. Jump to verse 20. And again the word of the Lord came unto Haggai in the four and twentieth day of the month, saying, Speak to Zerubbabel, governor of Judah, saying, I will shake the heavens and the earth. Look up. How many of you know that there are shakings happening around the world right now? He said, I will shake the heavens. I will shake the earth. In a way and a manner that no man can pretend not to know what is happening. Next verse. Verse 22. And I will overthrow the throne of kingdoms. So oh, this is coming to pass. I will overthrow the throne of kingdoms. And I will destroy the strength of the kingdoms of the hidden. Is this in your Bible? This is God saying this is what I'm doing in this season. He said, and I will overthrow the chariots and those that ride in them. And the horses and their riders shall come down. Every one by the sword of his brother. 23. I want you to read this together. I want to read. In that day, saith the Lord of hosts, I will take thee, put your name there, my servant, Put your father's name there. Say the Lord. And will make thee a signet. He said, and when all these shakings are happening, this is what I will be doing with you. He said, he called him by name and called the name of his father so that you will not be mistaken. He said, you know what a signet is? A signet is the king's symbol of authority. When a king makes laws, he uses his signet ring and stamps it. He said, when all these are happening, this is the prophecy for you. Because you are my servant, he said, I will make you a symbol of royalty. Because I have chosen you. If you believe that, say amen. amen. He began to speak to Zerubbabel about the glory of the latter house first and foremost he told him he said do you remember those of you who are old enough do you remember this house talking about the nation of israel the temple he said compared to what you see today it's nothing to write home about he said but don't be discouraged for i am still moving there is something about to do where is the power, the ability, the light, the authority? We talk so much about the days of God's generals. We talk so much about mighty men. We talk so much about mighty works. Terrible things in righteousness. The Bible talks about certain kinds of people that were almost not like human beings. In the book of Hebrews 11. 
He says, so through faith, subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, shut the mouth of lions. Where are these kinds of people? What dimension of glory did they walk in that, bring, that brought them into this depth of kingdom reality? But right now, what we see happening in the church and in our television is, is not a, it's nothing to be compared with the things that have been done in the earth. But the Lord is saying, do not be discouraged. In case many of you have been weary and are saying, Lord, you have told us that you will do mighty things in our days. And he left Zerubbabel with a prophecy in verse 9. He said, for the glory of this house you are seeing is about to surpass the glory that you have even seen before. He said, and I will fill this house with my glory. Hallelujah. And I hope you realize that in the New Testament, the temple is not just a building like this. The Bible says, Know ye not that you are the temple of the Holy Ghost. And so God is saying in this season, He wants to fill your life with His glory. He wants you to be so full of His glory. So full of His power. So full of His grace. That He will use you as a symbol. His signet ring upon the earth. Hallelujah. How many of you believe that this is what God is doing in this season? God is searching for men. Every time there is catastrophe and disaster. In our first service in January, I told us that I saw a lot of commotion happening in the earth. Death. Murder. All kinds of things. But in the midst of it, the Lord told us this is a season of supernatural exploits. It is the character of the spirit to see the end from the beginning. And he speaks as though he's already in the end. Because you see, God does not have a process in his life. The beginning and the end are all present before him. So he speaks from his realm of reality. Hallelujah. And he said in this season, Zerubbabel prophesied that I will shake the heavens and the earth and that the glory of the latter house will far exceed the glory of the former. The glory of all the people in your family, the thing you are about to do. He said, I will walk a walk in your days that even if they told any man, he will not believe. I will walk a walk. You have seen what your father have done. You have seen what your mother, you've seen what the people around. But God is saying, I will walk a walk in your life. That if I told you, you will not even believe. Oh, this I believe. I'm a believer. I believe God. The Bible says, blessed is she that believes. For unto her there shall be a performance. The performance is only for them that believe. Hallelujah. I will fill you with glory. This is the year and the season that God wants to bring us into his glory. That you will be so full of the glory, the presence of God. Hallelujah. But how will this happen? John 12. God is going to stir up and activate something in your spirit tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm just giving us a charge and we'll pray. We want, I want us to do some prayer in this place tonight. As we prepare ourselves for the miracle service. Verse 23. Now, every time Jesus is talking, listen. Because the Bible says every word that proceeds from his mouth is sufficient to keep you alive. Hallelujah. Anytime you are studying scripture and Jesus is talking, pay attention. This is what Jesus is saying. And Jesus answered them and said, The hour is come that the Son of Man should be what? Glorified. Next verse. So he said, This is the hour that the Son of Man will be glorified. But how shall it happen? He said, Verily, verily. In other words, I stake my reputation at this. Except a corn of wheat falls to the ground and dies. The Bible says it abided alone. But if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. 
I want to share with you tonight very briefly the mystery of death and glory. I want to show you that in the journey of the believer, there is a relationship between death and glory. This is a message that has not been understood by the body of Christ. We want power. We want anointing. What makes certain people so anointed, so full of power, so full of authority, so full of grace, so full of the favor of the Lord? Hallelujah. Jesus began to speak and said, the hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. The very next verse, he tells us how he's about to be glorified. He said, except a corn of wheat falls. That means there is a relationship between death and glory. Listen to me, saints of God. If you want to become a great man, a man, a mighty man in the spirit, this message is for you tonight. This is a prayer meeting. Hallelujah. And Jesus begins to relate death and glory. Haggai prophesies. That is the intention of God in this season to bring us into greater glory. And Jesus is saying, in fact, it's not just the season. The hour has come. And he's teaching us the principle that until the activity of death finds expression in you, you cannot manifest and walk in the glory of God. I will reverence you, Lord. I will reverence you, Lord. I will reverence you, Lord. I'm teaching you the art of the secret place. I will reverence you, Lord. For in your presence there is life everlasting. I will reverence you, Lord. I will reverence you, Lord. I will For in your presence there is life everlasting. I will reference you, Lord. I will reference you, Lord. I will, you, Lord. When God is set to bring his glory in your life, the first thing that happens to you is you begin to die. Now, this, listen, when you begin to die in the spirit, that's the time to rejoice. Hallelujah. Because when a corn of wheat dies, out of that decay will spring forth a new seed and it will begin to bear fruit. Paul says, so then death works in us that life will work in you. The degree to which you are dead is the degree to which you can minister. Only dead men can carry the glory of God. When the glory of God comes, the first thing it does is kill you and then it makes you alive again. That's why Paul said, I have been crucified with Christ. He said, nevertheless, I suddenly found myself alive again. But this time around, I do not live by my flesh. I live by another life, another law, another set of values. Hallelujah. When God is said to bring his glory to your life, listen, the first thing that will happen is that you will die to your old mindset. Hold on. The Bible says the glory of the latter house. In other words, the latter house is not the same as the former house, correct? When God, the Bible says you cannot put new wine in an old wineskin. Many of us want to 
just tidy up the old wine skin. God wants to tear it completely and replace another one. He said you cannot put new wine in an old wine skin. Old mindsets, old ideologies, old principles. The word of God gives you a new mindset. Not the mindset of your village. Not the mindset of your culture. See, when, when the word of God begins to walk in you, you begin to die to your old ideologies. Suddenly you find out that the things that attract and interest you are changing. This is the sign that you are prepared for the glory. Your appetite, the things that compel your desire, begin to change. Death is walking in you. Hallelujah. Your mindset begins to change. Your plane of perception of both spiritual and natural things begin to change. You see things from another perspective. Death is walking in you. Then you begin to die to the flesh. You find out that your flesh has no hold on you again. Listen to me. A lot of believers do not have the grace and the control over their flesh. Paul said in Romans 7, he said, but with my spirit I serve the Lord. And then in my members, my body, I see another law walking in me. So that the things I would want to do, I do not find myself doing them. And the things I do not want to do, that's what I find myself doing. He said, oh wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from this body of death? Although a great apostle, he was communicating his frustrations. Hallelujah. The flesh. When you begin to die to your flesh, the things of the spirit no longer become a burden. Are you listening to me? Things like prayer, things like fasting, things like your commitment in the house of God. It no longer becomes a thing of force. You now have a revelation. The grip of your flesh is no longer there. Hallelujah. The word of God does not become a burden for you again. You will begin to flow naturally with the Holy Spirit. Then you will die to the world, cosmos, the system. You will die to the mindset of this system. The Bible says, love not the world. It says, he that loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. The word there is eros. The word is lost. Hallelujah. A craving, an uncontrollable, unquenchable, godless appetite for the world. The more you begin to die to the world, you will find out that the things of the Spirit become your passion. This is not about pastor. Are you listening to me? This has nothing to do with ministry. Because there are some of you looking at me right now. You are so indifferent about the things of God. Let me announce to you that you are still alive in your flesh. Forget about the issue of glory. Glory is not a thing of prophecy. Are you listening to me? I can't prophesy glory into your life. Glory is a realm you attain unto. It's not receive glory. No. There's nobody that has prophesied glory to anybody from Genesis to Revelation. The Bible calls the Holy Spirit the Spirit of glory. He's the one who brings you into that realm of glory. Where you become supernatural. You become unusual. You become powerful. Full of light. Full of grace. And you can chart the course of your destiny based on the integrity of the word of God. This is what God is doing in your life. Hallelujah. But the hardest thing for believers, listen to me, is to die. Many believers don't like that subject of death because death connotes inconvenience. You will die to your ego. You will die to your plans. You will die to your ambitions. You will die to everything. Your whole world, what you have, what you have built, the tower of Babel that you have built, when God comes into your life, He will not just put a crown on it. He will shatter that tower of Babel. 
and begin to rebuild a new city after his own pattern. This is what is not taught in church. We teach people that you come as you are. Just have whatever you have. Just add whatever God brings to you. That's not true. God empties you completely. You cannot put new wine in an old wine skin. Many of us are still carrying our old wine skin. Your old mindset. Your old value systems. You don't want to leave them. You are holding on to them. You are afraid of the unknown. You are afraid of launching into God. You are afraid of your friends. You are afraid of loneliness. You are afraid of your associations. You are afraid of the embarrassment and the stigma and the temporary um, inconveniences that come as we contend to walk in the Spirit. Romans 8 verse 18 says, For I reckon that the sufferings, the constraints, the setbacks of this present time is not worthy. Hallelujah. When you see a woman pregnant, look up everybody. When you see a woman pregnant, there is another life. There is a baby in her womb. Are you listening to me? It will destabilize her posture temporarily. Is that correct? It's not whether she likes it or not. She will find herself bending by force. So long as she wants to keep that baby, she will do unusual things. You may not like it. Her appetite will change because of the child she's carrying. Are you listening to me? She'll wake up by 2 o'clock and say she wants to drink um, uh, milk. And then you bring it. She said, no, it was jollof rice, she said. Now, this is, this is a product of something that is happening. Are you listening to me? Her ideologies change. She begins to visit the hospital consistently. When you see these things, it begins to point an arrow to you that very soon this woman is going to deliver a child. Hallelujah. So when the Holy Ghost is birthing glory in you, there will be a season of travail. The Bible says, as soon as Zion travails, she shall put forth a son. Listen to me. Church of the Lord Jesus Christ, I will not deceive you. The birth of anything valuable is painful. Are you listening to me? The birth of anything valuable is painful. Anything at all. The Bible says there is no man that warreth who will entangle himself with civilian affairs. When you realize that you are part of the army of God, the glory house that Zerubbabel saw and prophesied, you realize that it's a season of glory. Now is the time to constrain yourself. As you abide by the principles of God, it will cost you. It will cost you your reputation. It will cost you your friends. Hear me. You cannot want this side and want that side. Uh -uh. The Bible says no man can serve two masters at a time. You cannot serve your friends and serve God. You cannot serve your ego and serve God. You cannot feed your desires and feed God. Ladies, listen to me very carefully. Because you are the ones that are most vulnerable at this time. You love God until you find the things that your desires crave for. I need you. I need you. Nothing, no place, no one else will do. I need you. I need you. For you satisfy the longing inside. Some of you should not be singing this song because you are lying. You are just singing it because you are enjoying it. But you are telling lies. You are telling lies. While you are saying, Lord, I need you, God is saying, it's a lie. The angels are saying it's a lie. See, listen, you must get to a point in your life where you make up your mind and vow. It's an oath of allegiance. It's an oath of fraternity with God. You say, Lord, I'm on your side once and for all. 
There is no doubt again I'm on your side. If it means me not getting married to be on your side, so be it. If it means me not being rich in this life, so be it. If it means me not having any reputation, not having any church, not having any ministry, so be it. You cannot love your desires and love the glory of God. No way, sir. But can I tell you something? If you pay the price for that glory, the Bible says the glory of the latter house, what God will do in your life when he's done with you, will far exceed what you would have desired for yourself. Hallelujah. Jeremiah 29, 11. It says, for I know the thoughts that I... You know, listen, Christians have this ugly way of thinking that God is the one who will wreck their lives. Look at me. If you have that mindset, repent this night. As we start praying, before joining our, our prayer point, just find somewhere and lie down and say, Lord, I thought you would destroy me. Hallelujah. A lot of people believe that when you come to God, He will just make you a failure. He will make you a useless person. It's preachers that taught that, not the word of God. Hallelujah. For my Bible tells me, I know the thoughts I think towards you, say the Lord. That means God is thinking about you. God is thinking. You don't need to wonder what is in his mind. The word of God is a mirror that tells you what is in the mind of God. The living logos. The thoughts of God. I know what God is thinking about me. That one day Joshua Selman will be a blessing to the world. That one day beyond the shores of Zaria, beyond the shores of this nation, we will do great and mighty things for the king. This is what God is thinking about me. I know what God is thinking about me. God is saying, son, I can do more with you than I've done so far. So don't you allow any pride and any apostle and all this nonsense that people use and deceive themselves. Don't let it get to you. The journey is still far. I know what God is thinking about me. That son, if you can pay the price now, the days of glory will come. You know, you people sometimes see the ministers or see some of the leaders or see our lives and you just believe. That teaching that you just lie down and God can call whom he can call. Jacob have I loved, um, Esau have I hated. Paul said, and let me correct that, I am what I am by the grace of God. Alright? He said, but this grace was not showered on me in that I labored more than ye all. He said, nevertheless, it is the grace of God. Many of you like teachings on favor. I teach about it. But your concept of favor is a window to run away from the process. There is a name for you, a thief. That's what the Bible says. It says thieves and robbers are the ones who want to follow the back door. There's no following the back door with spiritual things. I tell you the truth. There are many people who are running, doing ministry now. They will carry over many dealings with the spirit. Have you ever seen a matured man with short nicker going back to primary school and sitting? Because many people are jumping the dealings of God. We want ministry. We want branches. We want to go on air. Some of you are already like that. You are carrying that mindset. You are on your way going. God has held your legs together. Tied your hands like the hands of Samson and dragged you here. Said, correct that nonsense before you become a casualty to yourself. If you fail a course as a student, you will carry it over. You just have a few months. If you fail a course as a general in the spirit, no matter how old you are, you will wear that short maker again and sit down in that play class. That's why many people, I don't say this to condemn people, many people after they have risen, even if it is 20 years in ministry, if they must continue with God, somehow they will still go back and take those extra courses with the Spirit again. So what is your hurry for? The Holy Spirit is running with you at 80 km per hour. You see one zealous person just pass at 160. You say, Lord, this is twice my size. You hold on. Very soon you see people packing his bones and his legs. He has had a casualty with something else. This is how people, people run. That you are called does not mean you are already sent. Listen, listen, listen. My brother, come. I called him. Have I sent him? Start going. Did I send him? But he was genuinely called. That's what a lot of believers are doing. 
God says on your mark, you tell yourself, go, and you start moving. Then you get to the point where you need God's mercy and you say, where is the one that sent me? God says, uh, where is the one that called you? I'm here. The one that sent you should respond. Hallelujah. So you see a preacher come and stand before people and say, you members are not even taking care of me. Huh? Is this what the Bible says? Please don't yoke the people. Go and meet the person that sent you. God didn't send you as a preacher to be a burden to them. God sent you to be a blessing, not a burden. If you have problems, go back to the person who sent you. He said, when I sent you, lackest thou anything? God called the 12 disciples. They walked with him. A day came, he said, now I'm going to send you. When he sent them, all of them came back rejoicing. They said, even the demons. There was a day he did not send them. Can you remember? They sent themselves. What happened that day? There was a day they sent themselves in the Bible. See, many of you don't read your Bible to learn. You just read it for education. There was a day they sent themselves. Jesus was at the Mount of Transfiguration. And they were happy. They bring, bring the epileptic patient. Hallelujah. Except a corn of wheat falls to the ground and dies. Say, Lord, say after me, Lord, no matter what it will cost me, I will pay the price for your glory. Say one more time, Lord, no matter what it will cost me, I will pay the price for the glory. You may pay the price when you are supposed to use your, your, your money and buy cake for your birthday. God tells you, go and buy a Christian book. People come and meet you and say, ah, happy birthday, nothing for us, not, you know, please. I plan to celebrate many more birthdays. There's nothing for now. And they look, they say, you serve. This is your God you are talking about. You just keep quiet. Hallelujah. Ladies, you may not have any other shirt. You may have only two shirts. Wash one and iron it. No problem. Keep using the money to buy the books and the Bible and cry. Some of you need to add some serious desire for your life. Go and buy tapes and CDs. You have watched X-Men. You have watched all those films. When will you stop watching it? It's acting. Say after me, acting. Wake up from sleep and start. The Bible says, wake up, thou that sleepest, and Christ will give you life. There are many people sleeping. Get materials that will help your life. You hear me say this thing every time. A day will come. You will not share this thing the way it is like this again. The Bible says in the days of Samuel when the word of God was cast. There is no man that would deceive me into running away from the price I'm paying for the glorious future that I have ahead. Let me ask you a question. What price are you paying? Some of you, you are not paying anything. Say, my father will pay it for me. Hmm. Have you heard that song? Your father may let you down. Sing it. Whatever you want to say, he will let you down as long as it's not Jesus Christ. I'm challenging you, saints of God. When you hear me preach like this with passion, don't just laugh. Don't just laugh. We are going to pray. Lord, I want your glory in my life. And if it's bitterness that will stop that glory, I die to bitterness. If it's unforgiveness, I die to it. If you must be the one to go and apologize to somebody who offended you, I die to it. What are you willing to pay for the glory? It won't come cheap. The miraculous is not cheap. Somebody met me one time and said, forget it. God is everywhere. I say, yes. But his manifested presence with the anointing to perform is not anywhere. And if you doubt, I will call someone who is possessed right in your presence and leave you to struggle with the person. This is not pride. It's not everywhere. 
The beauty of success is that not everybody will have it. That's what makes it precious. The anointing is precious because not everybody is willing to have it. Brothers and sisters, there is a price to pay. The grace of God comes to enable you pay that price. There are some cups, no matter how you pray, it won't pass you by. You must drink that cup to the last drop. But when you drink that cup, you will arise with new strength. You will arise, you will mount up with wings like the eagles. Suddenly, the things that make ordinary men fall will keep you standing. You will walk on water and find yourself moving in glory. Do you know something? When that happens, you will only need to write just one book recording your experiences. And it can give you enough financial benefits that all your job, your life combined may not give you. Why? Because your experiences are a recording. See, I told you this last week. That everything you are doing in the spirit has monetary value. So don't you think you are losing? Hallelujah. Because there are many of us who are like the disciples of old. You are saying, Lord, I'm coming to Koinonia every time. What is my court in this thing? Are you the only one receiving glory? I'm worshipping you every day. I'm lying down. I'm crying. What is my own in this thing? God is saying, look at This is what I'm trying to get out of you. But when he finds you, I'm telling you, listen, listen, listen. Pass the test. Tell your neighbor, pass the test. The test of death. Jesus knew that he had to die. He prayed and said, Father, if it be thy will, let this cup pass me. Some of you will need to break away from some wrong associations. You've been praying and saying, Lord, is there another way of making all of them born again? God said, one day for now, you must leave them. There are many of you that it will cost you. God will give you dangerous instructions. Go and empty your account and sow it in the house of God. You have been binding for years. God is saying, I won't talk to you again until you do the last instruction I gave you. Tonight we are going to pray. And as you pray, many things will die in this place. Honestly. Many of you, some desires you've had. Many of you, some habits, many different things. Many of you, is your mouth. That coal of fire, your own, you don't need it touched. The whole coal must be put inside. And you wait there. And then your tongue is purified. Then you can speak to God. Hallelujah. Many of you have what the Bible calls a lying tongue. You exaggerate things, whether good or bad. You leave Koinonia and say, 90 cripples walked. Say, 90, say, huh? Eh? Tell you are 60. You, you are laughing. You need... These are the things that stop great men from being mighty. We are going to stand up. I'm saying this thing because when we start praying, don't look at me, look at God. We are not stopping soon. My desire is that for every one of us to be powerful, to be a friend of God. In the future, they will ask you, they will say, Esther, what did you do to attract the favor of God like this? You say, I won't lie to you. It's the grace of God. But come, let me show you. Hallelujah. You say, ah, Pastor Jakes lives in this big house. He didn't build it. And God will just slap your mouth and say, Were you there when he was fasting and praying? I asked you to fast. You said no. And I blessed him. Go and look for money and build your own. Since you think I'm stupid. Many of you think God is stupid. If God tells you leave every other thing and follow me. Let me tell you just follow him like a fool. If you can be foolish enough to follow God. You will be wise enough to enjoy the blessings of God. Ah. We're going to give all the children in this place biscuits. Protocol. Welfare. Is it available? Quietly just find all the children. If you have a child that's from 0 to 10 years, just lift your hands and they'll pass biscuits. We're talking about death now. You know what that means. If you are more than 10 years old, if you see any old hand that is a testimony of living long in this realm, just pass them welfare. We're going to pray. You need to die 
You need to die. Many of us need to die. When you die, look at me. Criticism. You see, a dead man cannot respond to criticism again. There are many of you that are always quarreling. You are quarreling everybody in your room. And they are talking about me. I wake up by two. You are still alive to yourself, brothers and sisters. Hallelujah. We are going to pray. Are you ready to pray? Rise up on your feet. I don't know how you are going to pray tonight, but you are going to pray seriously. Please, give this prayer your attention. This is for your destiny. You want to walk around, go ahead and walk around. We are going to pray. Hallelujah. The first prayer point is you are going to say, Lord, I desire your glory. I desire your glory in this mortal body. I desire your glory. Lift up your voice and begin to pray. Help me, Israel. Lift your voice and begin to pray. I desire your glory. I desire your glory. A realm that no demon, no devil, no power in hell can stand. I desire your glory. Oh God, show me your glory. That was the prayer of Moses. Oh God, show me your glory. Show me your glory. Beyond the things I've known about you. Come on, walk around and pray like generals. Rakate ko so prekate, mam pros kataya. Put your heart into this prayer tonight. Rekete posha, le cross ko preke prekete, ma cross kataya. I desire your glory. I desire your glory. I desire your glory. Manta pras kete le ko poso taya. I desire your glory. That I'll be a career of your glory. Are you praying tonight? Satoke Bosha, Rekete Kepa, Rapaskopaya, nothing, no one, no place. Make sure you're praying. Say, Lord, your glory. As in the days of old, show me your glory, O oh God. Show me your glory, O oh God. And I will shake the heavens and I will shake the earth. Koinonia pray tonight. Repo Shataya. Repo Kopiha. Lord, we cry for your glory. Greater levels of your glory, of your glory, of your glory. This is the generation that will travel until we burn the glory. Show me your glory, show me your glory. Are you praying? Are you praying, generals? Rakata Bosa, Mam Prekete. I don't want anything else. I don't want anything else. Just your glory. Just your glory. For now, my priority is your glory. Not marriage. My priority. Not money. My priority. Not fame. Not power. Show me your glory. Show me your glory, O God. I don't want to be a good preacher. Show me your glory. All I need is your glory, not ministry. Show me your glory. Show me your glory, O God. Some of you need to pray. 
The Spirit of God is in this place. I want to see your glory. Show me your glory, O God. Show me your glory. Show me what is forbidden for mortal eyes to see. Take me to realms beyond the natural. Take me on a journey in the spirit. Show me terrible things. Jeremiah 33 verse 3. Call on to me and I will answer. I will show you great and mighty things. I know they are praying tonight. Show me your glory, O God. Show me your glory, O God. Beyond my personal ambition. Pray. Beyond your academics. Pray. Show me your glory. I tell you, when you find God's glory, you will find prosperity, you will find fame, you will find lifting, you will find favor. Cry for the glory tonight. Lord, we mean business with you tonight. We cry for your glory. Not church as usual, not Christianity as usual. Take us to a new level. A new level, a new level of encounter. Rakata pakata prega bele de bosa. Rakata prega bele bala raba. Rakata pakata. Rapakata bala bala ba. Raposto pekete. Lekosto so pekete. Mamposto pekete. Lekete kete. Rapaka poso kesa. Kapali kete kete. This is the generation of them that seek thy faith. Come on, generate energy in the spirit. Make sure you are praying in the Holy Ghost. Tonight, don't be tired. This is for your destiny. This is for your destiny. This is for your destiny. As soon as Zion travels, as soon as Zion travels, show us your glory. Show us your glory. I want nothing more, nothing less your glory. I tell you, the mighty presence of God is in this place. Your glory, we cry as a house tonight. Many of you do not know what the glory of God is. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Look at me. Listen. The Bible says, Seeing then, Hebrews 12 verse 1, That we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, he said, let us therefore lay aside every weight. You are going to pray. Listen. This very prayer, take note. Because the Holy Ghost is going to be walking on people one by one as you pray this prayer. Listen. You are, as you pray this, you will die to many things. Are you listening to me? The power of God is in this place. You will die to many things. For many of you, as you pray, you will find out that that loss will lift like a spirit from you. Some of you, that prayerlessness will lift that anger. So listen, in the next few minutes, if you want to work at whatever, just is you and God. Forget that you came for Koinonia tonight. Instrumentalist, help me. I need you to help me. I need you to help me. Are you ready now? Just the symbol. That's all I need. Just the symbol. Just the symbol. 
lift your voice and pray. Saints of God, Apakata Prakete, Rekete Kete, Rekete Kete, Rapata Kosa, let waves drop all God. Ma prosko pekere, rapaka dosa, rakata pekete leke, meko prosko pa, ma poto go tekete, reke teke leke 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 bosa, rakata poko to pekete, meko prosko to, reke teke te, esko to pekete, ma poto bosa, ma poto bosa, Hallelujah. 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 And Moses said, If I have found favor in thy sight, show me your glory. What did Moses know about the glory of God? He didn't say, Make me a preacher. He didn't say, Make me a prophet. He didn't say, Give me money. He said, Show me your glory. Something tonight has broken in your spirit. Some of you tonight will begin your journey of total surrender. Honest surrender. There are some of you, you don't even need somebody to lead you to Christ now. Right where you are, you're already praying the prayer to be born again.
Hallelujah. Listen. We're rounding up. Without the glory of God, we have no ministry. It is this glory that causes transformation. It is this glory that makes you a miracle worker. It is this glory that makes you immune. You are paying the price right now for the glory. These sufferings of this present time. You may look weak. You may in quote be a failure. Your academics may not even be anything to write home about. But you watch what the glory of God can do in your life. The Bible says there is hope for a tree though it be cut down. He said at the scent of water. For some of you tonight, God has begun a walk with you that will carry you through until the miracle service. It's a dealing of the spirit you cannot stop. It's a fire that has been ignited in your spirit. You will go back and people cannot explain what happened to you. Listen, brothers and sisters, this is what happens in Koinonia that sometimes people do not understand. How will someone just come and suddenly leave just one meeting with a degree of transformation you cannot explain. It's not the man of God. It's the glory of God. This is why it is better for us to have only two people and have the glory than to have a stadium of people and lack the glory. It is better for us to remain at the spiritual level we are and have the glory than rise to positions of greatness and fame without the glory. The worship team got it on the spot this night. I need you. Nothing. No place. That must be your decision. And that's the last prayer point tonight. You're going to say, Lord, truly, there are other things that have taken your place, but this night, I take you back to your position. There is nothing I cannot give you. Some of you need to think well before praying that prayer because there are things you cannot give him. Now say, Lord, finally I lay it down. Lift up your voice. Anything that represents Isaac in your life, your fame, your reputation, is calling you tonight. Come on, pray. You are not yet a Christian. You can lay it down. Say, Lord, there is nothing I cannot give you. I've always been joking, but I mean it tonight. You mean all to me. I need you. I can give you my fame. My anointing can go. Marriage can go. Money can go. Nothing. Mean it from your heart. And no place. Take your place. That should be your prayer tonight. Ladies, pray. You especially. Take your place, oh God. What has taken your place in my life tonight? Take it back, oh God. What has taken your place? Take it back tonight. What has taken the fire? Lord, take it back. For many of us, our lives are ikabod. The glory departed when you began to chase after things, chase after money, chase after people. For many of us, the testimony of our lives are ikabod. No more fire, no more prayer life. Your personal altar is dry. Your world life is dry. Your appetite for the things of the spirit. Tonight, let there be a reignition. A fresh fire for his presence. You used to read books. You love God. You spent your money buying books. When did you start concentrating on clothes? 
beyond the things that brought you glory. Come on, pray tonight. The Lord is taking his place. The Lord is taking his place. Some of you will literally feel like fire on your chest. Literal fire. Take your place tonight, oh God. Dethrone every idol that has stolen our prayer lives, stolen our word life, stolen the grace to walk in obedience. Restore us to the place of fire, the place of passion. Your conversation used to be everything of the spirit. But right now, all you concentrate on is carnal things that have no eternal value whatsoever. Cry tonight and say restoration, oh God. This is a solemn assembly tonight. God is preparing us for the miracle service and for our lives. You are alone with God. In the next two minutes, cry to God alone. Forget that you came for Koinonia tonight. Cry and say your glory. Lord, there's no pretending it again. I'm crying. Don't let my fire go cold. Don't let my love for you go cold. Quit chasing titles. Quit chasing ministry. Quit chasing anointing. Pray. Exalt him above every devilish association. Exalt him above every church and every ministry. For some of you, your idol is church. Your idol is ministry. You rather disobey God and obey your pastor and obey church. Say, Thou shalt have no other gods above me. Tonight is calling us higher. He that beareth fruit, my father will prove. Pray just one minute and we'll round up. Come go with me behind the veil. Come go with me behind the veil. Come go with me behind the veil. Come go with me. There is a higher realm than where you are standing. Come up either the spirit is calling tonight. Come go with me. Beyond the realm you are seeing, you have encompassed this mountain long enough. Some of you who need to run, not walk. 
Hallelujah. You've once given your heart to the Lord, but honestly, you know tonight in this family of faith that you need to begin a fresh journey. Or you've never made a decision for Jesus. Someone even invited you tonight. I'm just going to count three. I want you to leave your seat and come out here quickly. I want to agree with you and pray with you that you start a new experience. One. Quickly. If you're thinking about it, just remain on your seat. Two. This is my desire to honor you. As you stand here, just be praying. Don't look at me. Lord, we don't my heart is just you and God alone. Forget about who is with you. I worship you. You're talking to your king and your maker. All I have within me. Tonight is time to address those ways. I give you praise. I talk about Lataya. All that. I adore is in you. Those of you in front here, yeah, I like you to cry out your heart to him. Hey, hey, hey. Lord, I give you. It's not a special number. Give my soul. Cry. Like the deer pants after the water. I give only I give for you, my Lord. embracing you. He's telling you we can start afresh. For there is now therefore no condemnation. Tonight I want you to begin a journey. Even if you are a pastor, just forget about it for now. Let's begin a journey. Talk to the Lord in one minute. Those in front. Talk to the Lord. If you think there's nothing to say, go back to your seat. But if you have something to say, talk to the Lord. Say, Lord, I open my heart. Enough of church. My sister, that guy that always comes around to sleep with you, send him a text this night. Bye-bye. Go for good. I bless you. May you find the love of God. Hallelujah. Those of you in front here, I'd like you to lift your hands as high as you can lift it so that you will not forget. Say after me, Lord Jesus, I love you with all my heart. I come before you tonight to start afresh. Lord, I'm sorry for my life. Tonight, take me, mold me, use me. I receive your life. I denounce every sin and every weight that takes me away from God. Lord, a fresh fire upon my life. Holy Spirit, reveal yourself to me. Let's begin a journey tonight. 
Make me a sign and a wonder. Hallelujah. You will never regret this decision. You will look at me. Forget about, don't be ashamed of your tears. This is a family. This is where we all cry together. You will never be the same. Never. I assure you. You met God tonight. You will never be the same. Hallelujah. Now, you're going to follow the ushers just in one minute. We're out of time. And we'll have your details. Hallelujah. By God's grace, we'll have time and talk with you people. We'll create time and we'll talk with you people. Counsel you. Just help you with some foundational truths. You will never be the same. I love you from the depths of my heart and I salute you for this great decision. It takes the Spirit of God to have brought you out. Hallelujah. Appreciate them, celebrate them as they well. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now you are worshipping with us for the very first time. I want to pray a special prayer. This doesn't come all the time, but if you are worshipping with us for the first time, please run and come out quickly. This is your first time. We want to bless you. Please, quickly, quickly, we're out of time. Appreciate them, Koinonia. Those of you who invited them, may the Lord keep inviting your destiny helpers into your life. Keep clapping, they are still coming. God bless you. Keep coming. We'll pray for you. Hallelujah. Sister, two of you there, the power of God is coming on you right now as I'm talking. The power of God is coming strong upon two of you. You will never be the same. There is a fire that is coming upon both of you. I welcome you tonight. This is Koinonia. Our desire is to make sure people experience the reality of the Holy Spirit. Thank you so much for coming. The Lord brought you here by himself. I assure you, you will never be the same. This is not church. This is the revelation of the reality of the life of Jesus Christ. I want you to know we're going to pray for you. Hallelujah. For many of you, you will go back and be shocked at what has happened to your life. I assure you, this is a guarantee. Hallelujah. As we stretch our hands and pray for you, I'd like you to receive it into your spirit. This is not a formality. Saints of God, stretch your hands. Prophesy into their lives. We bless you with a hunger for the presence of God. We bless you with a passion for spiritual things. Let a fountain be created inside you that will make you desire God desire intimacy with the Holy Spirit whatever challenge you came here with whether it's sickness or oppression it leaves you completely whatever character flaw you came here with you you walk back a changed person your values change your appetites change complete transformation by the power of the Holy Spirit. Lord, bless them. Bless them. Bless them. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Thank you. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salmon. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him, that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here. Don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing, keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing Jesus. I'll see you again. Bye.